Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, what's it so we know for next time? Yeah. Well, Bill, Bill knows for next time. He's he's got to make sure he's indispensable. So. All right. <laughs> he's not yes. going to share the the secrets it, with us. It is uh, seven oh eight on June twenty first, two thousand twenty one. It is the second day of summer, and I call our uh, select board meeting to order. Um, good to be in the room again, in the memorial, the memorial room, and uh, Darcy is joining us from from her living room so she can be mass free and people can hear her. So um, we will stand up and start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. OK. Um, Announcements and board openings. And we will be talking about some uh, board assignments later tonight. But currently, right now, on the Conservation Commission, we have one opening. On Finance and Advisory Committee, we have one opening and two associate open openings. The Hamilton Historic District Commission has one opening. There is one opening on the Zoning Board of Appeals. And there are two openings on the Open Space Committee. And there is an associate member position available on the Hamilton Planning Board. So, so we had talked about reaching out to some of the people who had, who had, uh, who had wanted to be on the master planning committee. I'm right. not sure if um, we've done that yet, because I think some of these people yet. would be good people for the planning board and the and the zoning board of appeals. That's a good idea. <clears throat> uh, we now will uh, have public comment. Uh, three minutes on topics not already on the agenda. So I will open the mic up on the floor to people in the audience and on Zoom for three minutes on topics. Okay, we will start with uh, select board and town manager reports and we'll just go uh, around the room. We'll start with Darcy. Darcy, anything uh, new in the last week? Um, yes, uh, I just wanted to let everyone know it, with regard to sensitiv sensitivity training, um, our human, I'm sorry, <laughs> our human resources professional, Michelle Lee, um, has been in contact with the um, Diversity Workplace Consulting Group. And I'm waiting for them to get in touch with us so that I can um, ask some questions. Um, this is a program that's called Overcoming Unconscious Bias. It's uh, the earliest date they think they can get us in will be September. It's a 90 minute session. There's a pre-session and a post-session as well. Um, so I'm, I am anticipating that they will be making contact um, with me through Michelle Lee. And uh, it's just a part of the due diligence that we have to do. Um, and once I get the information that I'm looking for, I'll be reporting back to the board. Um, so this is in progress. Um, the COA had a, an informal open house last week. I was planning on going, but something came up. I was not able to get there. Um, but I am interested to hear how it went, if anybody did manage to, to get there. And um, we had the first Hamilton Juneteenth celebration on Friday. There was a flag raising at Patton Park. Um, we had our state senator, uh, Bruce Tarr, was there, and our U.S. representative, Seth Moulton, attended. Um, it was a very diverse audience. It was a good crowd, and um, uh, the, the turnout was great. And I think the next thing we need to work on is our ADA compliance with Town Hall. And that's it. Thank you, Darcy. And the, the, the organization you mentioned on the, um, on the training, was that one of the ones that Joe had brought in a couple weeks ago? That was yes. the same company, correct? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you for uh, following up on that. Thank you. Uh, Sean, anything uh, new in the last two weeks? No, not really. <laughs> I don't really have anything tonight, other than uh, it's good to be here. Yeah. Uh, Rosie? Yeah, agreed. It is nice to be back. Um, I have a few things. Um, first thing is I was invited by the um, Hamilton Fire Department to come to um, the Myopia Schooling Field and watch their med flight training. Um, with um, Chief Burnett and a bunch of the, the firefighters. That was really amazing to me. These little tiny helicopters um, are outfitted as an absolute mobile emergency room. I talked to the nurse and the paramedic who were part of the crew, and I was, 
I, I was in awe of them, and they actually said they enjoyed their um, their jobs very much. And by the way, Ray said he'd be putting a helicopter on the line item for <laughs> next year. That little tiny <laughs> helicopter retails or sells for six million dollars. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Anyhow, that was a really um, great experience, and thanks to Hamilton Fire Department and to Boston Med Flight for for coming down and um, showing us their. What day equipment. was that? What day was that? It was on the 16th. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, was, it was really great. Um, so the next thing is the master plan meeting. We had um, the steering committee. We had a meeting on the 10th. Caroline Weeks is the um, consultant, she, great person. Um, and the, the group, um, the steering committee is energetic, well-informed, and it's a mixed demographics which uh, group which I really enjoyed, and they're very representative of the town. So our next meeting will be on July 1st, and our homework assignment is to um, come up with what we think um, a mission statement should be, so we're all working on that. Um, the next thing is, um, um, Richard Luongo resigned as um, chair of the Conservation Commission and um, the new person, Lauren Lynch, that we appointed um, late last year. She's, she's ready for the challenge, very energetic, and asks lots of questions. And I would like to especially say welcome to Brian Colloran, whom I met last week. <coughs> Fabulous choice. He really knows his, his stuff, and he's also the chair of the uh, Newberry Conservation Commission. So he brings a wealth of knowledge, and very glad to have him on board. And then finally, there was a site, uh, site walk at the Patton Homestead for um, the, the BOS, and that was held on 612. Three members of the Board of Selectmen, Select Board, attended. Um, Patton Homestead Inc., Mark Johnson came, some of the Conservation Commission members, and also members of the Patton Ridge Homeowners Association. George Tarr took us on a tour of the planned walking route around the property. He pointed out several salient facts about the property on the way. Um, and we all enjoyed his talk. We all enjoyed really seeing the property. George had talked about a reforestation of some of the um, area for the Patton Homestead, and some of us were concerned that maybe he wanted to reforest where the um, Patton Homestead um, lawn was, and that is not the case. So we actually saw where he's planned it, and that might be a good spot. And I also wanted to thank Mark Johnson for his um, extremely knowledgeable um, associate tutorial telling us about the history of the Patton Homestead. It was really, really interesting. Um, there's still um, some minor issues to be worked on, to be worked out about the walking loop, but I do believe that there's a solution um, available to where the um, Patton Ridge Homeowners Association will be satisfied and the town will have a completed loop and those conversations um, will continue. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie? Uh, yeah, well, when you go next to last, most people take them, but I enjoyed the conservation walk at the Patton Homestead and uh, the Human Rights Commission met last week uh, and it was it's good to see uh, some of the recommendations of that come to fruition in the Juneteenth flag raising ceremony, which I was out of town for, but but my wife, your wife was there, your dog was there too. And that's all I have. Great. Yes, I also will echo that. I was at the uh, Juneteenth celebration. It was a great event and good to follow our progress uh, pride flag raising as well earlier in the month. Um, it was an honor to have Seth Mould. I talked with him a little bit. He has some great messages about freedom in this country, and some people still don't feel like they're free. So it's important that we always strive for uh, to be able to be free and, and feel like you have freedom. So, but he was uh, great to talk to, great great representative, and uh, and I appreciate him coming to our town to help us out. Mm -hmm. um, the other things is the board of uh, sorry, the uh, planning board is meeting. They met last week. They're meeting again on the sixth um, of July, and currently they're. The big thing on their on their agenda is the uh, they're calling it conceptual review of the 40B proposal from Harbor Light at um, 455 Asbury Street. So if you're interested in that project, um, I would attend the next meeting on July 6th. Um, 
that's all I have. It's been a busy week with school ending and summer starting and graduation, so good to be here and uh, going to be a good summer. So, Joe, you want to give any updates on town manager? Uh, so I, I'm I admittedly behind on my getting my report done for this week. Uh, I had to I had to miss Juneteenth flag raising because my uh, ten year old was graduating fourth grade, and uh, I needed to be there. And mm -hmm. uh, there really isn't a whole lot going on in terms of boards and committees. We there will be a uh, Hamilton Historic District Commission meeting in this room tomorrow night uh, <laughs> because when they had to advertise for the meeting, we weren't allowed to do virtual meetings, so they'll be in person tomorrow. But uh, potentially returning to virtual again down the road. Um, we're in the midst of hiring a number of positions. We're interviewing candidates for the new building commissioner position that was created by town meeting. We're finalizing the job description for the health director position that was created in town meeting. We're um, reviewing applications right now for an assistant to the town manager, uh, community preservation coordinator that was uh, left vacant when my assistant left to go <laughs> work for the state. So we're, we're uh, spending a lot of time kind of doing those kinds of things. So. Uh, your, my report to you will be a little bit light when you get it, but that uh, I'll have it to you this week. So, well, Joe, you are carrying a lot of, a lot of. Uh, we're in a few hats. Yeah, this week. we're in a few hats <laughs> this week. So, <laughs> so, so appreciate the effort. Thank you. All right, so we're getting to our agenda, uh, and the first agenda item is about acceptance of various gifts from this for the COA. So this one we can um, discuss and vote. It's the surplus goods we have to. Table, correct. So, nope, nope. Uh, that one's further down. This one here is uh, there have been two financial donations to the COA to help uh, with programming and such, and it needs to be accepted as a gift so that it can be put into a special revenue fund and be used by the town and the council on aging to do things to support the uh, the council on aging. Uh, all all money that's given to the town is general fund revenue unless you accept it as a gift. So, uh, there are these two uh, gifts that were made to the town. If you can. Can you see them? I'll make sure. Mm -hmm. Increase my uh, zoom, zoom in a little bit and see if we can increase. I recognize one of them. Yeah, the Dale family. Thank you, Darcy. Family. Nice family. <coughs> and um, so I didn't know it was going to be like this. I would have made it anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, Lily so we have uh, uh, made a donation in memory of her mother. So I'm looking for a motion to accept uh, $2,100 in gifts to the Hamilton Senior Center COA. I move to accept move. the various gifts to the COA for the monetary donations. And second. A second from Rosie. Uh, any further discussion? No, thank you. Other than just thank, thank people for being generous. So we'll do a roll call vote, and uh, and I think we should, because uh, Darcy's still remote, we'll do a roll call vote. So Darcy? Uh, Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Sean? Sean Farrell, aye. Or, uh, Rosie? Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, William Olson, I. So unanimous uh, acceptance of the gift. Okay. Joe, is that it? Anything else we need to do on that? Nope. I'll uh, I'll give that acceptance to the finance department, and they'll do what they need to do, and we'll have some money that we can spend to help the seniors have some fun down there. Um. So the next item on the agenda is uh, to discuss and vote on an amended conservation restriction for a property on Bridge Street. So we have some members of the audience here to present the. Um, I have read through the application and seen the, and seen the map and site plan. It's gone out to the rest of the board here. So, yeah, if you can just give us a rough. Does it make sense to show this um, for everybody? Sure. Yes. I think that would be helpful. Okay. Good. All right. So introduce yourself and then uh, tell us what we're looking at. So I good evening, members of the board. I'm Valerie Moore from <coughs> Nutter, McLennan and Fish, <coughs> and I represent the estate of John Gardner. Um, with me tonight is Chris LaPointe from Essex Greenbelt. And... When I first started working on this project, it was not the estate of John Gardner I was representing, but Mr. Gardner himself. Um, this project started because, as you can see from the plan shown on the screen, there are several structures located on the Gardner property at 375 Bridge Street. Two of them are residences. There's the main residence at the back of the property, and then there's a smaller residence at the front. And this started because it turned out the electrical systems were quite out of date on those properties. It was a knob and tube system that were daisy chained together, which does not meet modern electrical code. So the property owner undertook to put in a new electric line to serve the, the main dwelling, replacing that old daisy chained knob and tube system so that uh, it would be in compliance with the current electrical code and also alleviate a, a significant fire hazard to the, the structures that are on the property. 
because of where the utility hookups are located on the street by National Grid, that utility line had to cross through an area that's subject to a conservation restriction that was put on the property several years ago. Um, you can see it's on the plan on the screen marked with the line marked with little E's is where the electric line runs. Um, it's in a, a concrete um, conduit that runs under the ground. And the area that is part of the conservation restriction that the electric line runs through is actually a horse pasture. So it's a mowed lawn area. It's not maintained in a naturalized state. Um, and the area was completely restored that the electric line runs under. Um, however, because the conservation restriction was negotiated several years ago at the time that it was put together, um, it didn't have a provision in it to allow modifications to the utility, uh, utility lines on the property. That's pretty unusual for a conservation restriction. Most of them are set up to allow the restriction holder, in this case Essex Greenbelt, to authorize modifications to utility lines. Um, so when this was brought to our attention, um, Mr. Gardner, through me, began working with Essex Greenbelt to negotiate an amendment to the conservation restriction. And if you've worked on conservation restrictions before, you know amendments are pretty unusual and they are very difficult. The state holds you to a very high standard uh, wanting to see that the restriction actually improves the um, sort of protectiveness of the restriction um, through this amendment. And so in working with Essex Greenbelt, we um, developed two ways that this proposed amendment increases the protective values of the conservation restriction. First and foremost, the work that was done um, does not in any way impair the conservation values of the restriction. So um, the conservation values in this case are preserving it as open space um, and protecting the adjacent wetlands. And because the area over the electric line was completely restored, there's no impairment to the, the restriction. You would never know it's any different today. Um, the, the proposed amendment also adds in two new provisions. One is changing what was previously a deemed approved provision to a deemed denied provision. So um, under the way the, the prior restriction was written, if we wanted to do certain work on the property, the beneficiary, the um, property owner could send a notice to Essex Greenbelt if they didn't respond within a certain period of time, that was deemed an approval and we could move forward with the work. We've changed that to a deemed denial, so now if we send a notice that we intend to do certain work and Essex Greenbelt doesn't respond within a certain period of time, it's considered denied. Um, the second change is adding an amendments provision into the restriction. There wasn't one previously and that sets forth the terms under which any future amendments would be considered by um, Essex Greenbelt and then, of course, the, uh, this board and the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs. So we negotiated this amendment and Essex Greenbelt's board approved it and we have had it reviewed by uh, Energy and Environmental Affairs and they have approved it. Uh, they will, they sign after the board, this board approves it. Um, so with that, um, I don't know if you want to add anything, and I'm happy to answer any okay. questions that anyone has. I, I have some questions. Um, will the new services come off the um, already uh, dug <laughs> wire that's already underground? Would the new service have to come from the road, or would it from Bridge Street, or would it come off the, the um, service that's already underground? I mean, I don't know how these things work, so. Sure, so it's a new conduit that was constructed where the E's are shown on that plan. Um, mm -hmm. National Grid will make a connection where at the top of the, the plan, you can see it, I think it says existing electric line. Um, they'll connect the electric line into the uh, box at the street at that location and then the wire runs through the conduit and I believe they're also going to run an internet and cable wire through the same conduit because there wasn't previously internet service at the house and 
in 2021, that is basically <laughs> as necessary a utility as electricity is. So um, that'll be the first time that house has had internet access. But um, I'm gonna let Chris the point speak as well. Sorry, I know you can't see us off my off camera here. Thank you very much. Chris LaPointe, I'm the Director of Land Conservation at Greenbelt. Um, I don't want to repeat too much of what Valerie said, but just for the record, um, amendments to conservation restrictions are exceedingly rare. They're rare for Greenbelt. Um, we have a, a conservation restriction amendment policy that we follow in a case like this. So we ran this through our policy. We ran it through our Land Protection Committee and ultimately through the board. And each the committee and the board unanimously recommended this. Um, so we have a comfort level with it based upon the fact that the majority of our restrictions would have a provision like this and that this is a situation that from our standpoint is um, close to an oversight from when the restriction was drafted. It's not harming the conservation values as Valerie said. It's serving a house that is existing. There was already utilities to it so from our standpoint Although it's unfortunate to have to amend the CR, it's something that we were comfortable with. Certainly the review by the state and the negotiation around the additional elements that strengthened the restriction while allowing this made us very comfortable. So I'm happy to answer any questions. But Was the original service overhead or was it underground as well? I believe it was underground. I was just curious if it, we, if you eliminated that aspect of it, it would be obviously an improvement, but if you took out overhead line to put the uh, duct bank in, but. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I never thought to ask the question. Um, it just never occurred to me that we were trying to preserve what was there. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I don't know the answer to that, um, but I do know that it wasn't something that could be preserved because it was knob and tube and you can't interconnect structures like that um, not under the modern building code anyway and so I have, I have two questions first um, do either of you know how deeply the, the cement conduit is buried I don't know the answer to that um, off the top of my head though that was in our, our conservation commission filing which um, this was approved with a notice of intent um, several months ago for this work, so. Okay, and then this the second question I have, um, it's meant to provide um, updated electricity to the existing house and to new developments um, in back of the property. Should there be any, or is, it was, or is it just going to the house on the property? It only serves the house on the property. It's, okay. it's not serving anything else. Okay. So, so I have to say, uh, initially, I um, was a little concerned about um, a conservation restriction that that um, has not been enforced for that long. And then the landowners, um, the the land, the surviving landowner passed away, and so I I had a lot of questions, and I read this um, document very carefully. And so um, I'm comfortable, I implicitly trust um, the Green Belt and I think they make um, excellent decisions. And so um, although I still have a smidge of trepidation overall, I, I trust the Green Belt and I would certainly agree with um, this amendment if they thought it was in the best interest of the conservation easement. Yeah. Thank you. I just have a kind of a, it's a follow-up, probably similar to, to Bill's question about the line. So National Grid's going to be running this line to the, the houses. Have they inspected the conduit already and, and deemed it s suitable for what they're trying to do? Yes. Okay. Yes. I didn't so, see that in the, con the conservation restrictions. So right. No, the, the last step that they do would be outside of the conservation restriction area, which is just the connection at the street. Right. So. I, just was, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have to dig anything up mm -hmm. in your restriction to fix anything. So no. If, it's, if they've deemed it good enough to do so. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? So I, obviously utilities are an important part of being able to live and so I appreciate that now next time in the future you'll make sure you have utility uh, acceptances on your uh, deed restrictions correct because probably a lot of time and effort to do this so thank you for going through the process so 
Um, so I do have a motion to, um, let me read this properly, but I have a motion to uh, approve the amended conservation restriction for uh, 375? 375 Bridge Street. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second, so moved by Darcy, seconded by Rosie. Any further discussion? So Joe, um, we, we just have to, so what, what's our next steps if this gets approved tonight, what do we have to do? Um, you have to sign the signature page that's there um, and have the signatures notarized and send the signatures to me and I can okay. have it recorded. And what's the timing on this for, is, is the utility company waiting on something or? Yes, so the utility company won't move forward until this is approved. I will communicate with them tomorrow and hopefully now that we have everyone's approval, they'll be willing to at least put us on the schedule while we're collecting signatures because understanding that takes a little bit longer during COVID. Does so. every sig signature need to be notarized or just the first signature? Um, typically every signature gets okay. separately notarized. Who's going to ask me if I didn't ask you, so. I'm sure. a notary. I'll make it How four convenient. Up, uh, done. All right, we'll <laughs> all let's, let's take a let's take a vote. So, uh, Darcy, uh, Darcy Dale, I. Sean, Sean Farrell, I. Rosie, Rosie Kennedy, I. Jim Knudsen, I. And uh, William Olson, I. So, do you have? I didn't actually print out the signature page. Uh, I didn't either because I didn't expect to have to do it tonight. But we can get it done yeah. tonight. Can um, it. You can give me a print it out. Okay. Um, right. May I ask what time uh, tomorrow you'll be picking up the paperwork, Valerie? Uh, she's going to wait for our call, oh. so it's not set up yet. Right. Whenever you're ready, I'm happy to have a courier come pick it up, or you can mail it to me. Either one works. Okay. So, Joe, if I swing by tomorrow morning and sign it, would that work for you? It should work fine for me, okay. as long as it's okay Good. with Mr. Bowler. Sign it as your free act and leave. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye, Chris. I hope you recover quickly. Thank you. Take care. Um, the next item is to approve. Sure. Uh, yeah. <sighs> that one. Wow. Oh. Look at that. Thank you very much. There we go. Super. Come prepared. I will email you another box that will work it. Thank you. Making it all sorts of easy for us. Um, Next item on the agenda is approve <coughs> minutes of a previous meeting. Joe, um, I know that. Uh, can you just <sighs> I, can, which, I can bring uh, it up. Yep, I can bring it up because it was uh, in the. Just so okay. we can clarify which ones they are. And I know Darcy had sent some out today. Is, is the ones that Darcy sent out today? No. Shouldn't no, it shouldn't okay. be those ones. It right. should be. These ones here. Is this the joint meeting? Hamilton Finance Advisory Committee, May 17th. Yeah, I think it's the 17th. Yeah, that's it. Or the that's 27th. It. Yep, May 17th, 2024. And, yep. and th this is not the executive minutes. These are regular right. minutes. Right. So I do have a motion to approve the meeting minutes of May 17th, 2021. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Were they, were they in the package or did we get them? No, they were in the they package. In the package. They were in the yeah. package. Really? They were in like the second or yeah, three. Yeah, there were three emails. I, I need a, I, because I've readily admitted I need an assistant that can help me. Oh, gosh. Put yes. that all in one thing again. I know. I agree. I agree. That's okay, Joe. I think three is, that's good. I would have had many more. <laughs> you okay with it voting tonight? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll start with uh, Darcy. Darcy? Darcy Dale, aye. Sean? Sean Farrell, aye. Rosie? Rosie Kennedy, aye. Jamie? Jim and I. And uh, William Olson, I. Moving along here, the fourth item we're going to table the surplus goods from Council of Agent Storage because we um we have to take one more step of of cataloging and foot uh, mm. uh, taking inventory of the um of the item. So we'll do that at our next. Put that on our next. Yep. Meeting we'll agenda. Do. All right. The good, this one we look forward to every year: the um, board and committee reappointments. So I, we asked everybody to fill in the sheet. Um, I got them all back. Everybody has a copy of it in front of them. I think everybody really got what they asked for. I think the only, there's only about three in question that we can start talking about tonight, and then we can make sure we, but on the capital committee 
I thought so. What I did is I gave everybody sort of their first choice, and then and then if anybody didn't vote for anything, I just put put you what you were on last year, so it's some continuity because I think that's important. Mm -hmm. If you think you're on too many, let me know. But um, I think it kind of evened out. But so we start with the first one, capital, the capital committee. I think Rosie and Darcy both um had interest in that one, and the council on aging. So um, so I think can we co liaise? Well, I think maybe one of you take council on aging, and one of you, other one of you take capital committee. Darcy, that would be a good, a good compromise. Or, I mean, you can all, you can attend all the meetings you would like to. So, Darcy, I will um, um, relinquish my request for the capital committee. Should you relinquish your request for the council on aging? Okay, we can do that. Good woman. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Thank so you, Darcy. so Rosie's gonna, <laughs> Rosie's gonna take the ca so Rosie's gonna take the council, council on aging. aging. Mm -hmm. Darcy, Darcy's yeah. gonna take the Capcom. Um, okay, and then um, on the finance committee, um, Darcy, you've been on that you've been on that for a while. Jamie had expressed interest. I, you know, I had no preference on that. I just wanted to hear if that's important to either one of you. If we wanna, if we wanna debate it, or if um, one of you is willing to sort of give it up and maybe do it next year. Yeah, I, I'm fine with Darcy continuing. Okay, all right. Thank and you. Darcy, Jamie's fine with you continuing. Don't you have Thanks. anything to trade her <laughs> so that she <you> don't lose? <laughs> um, the Hamilton Development Corporation, um, I expressed interest in it and so did, so did Jamie, mm -hmm. but Jamie, since you didn't get the, uh, the, the you didn't get that one, you can, you can take that one if you'd like. Yes. You, you expressed interest in that, correct? Yes. Okay, so, and you live in the, uh, downtown so it makes sense for you so I will give up my uh, my interest in that and then uh, we come down to town hall building committee I mean I think once again whatever happens with that I think that Darcy and Rosie continuing to help that effort is fine whatever that happens to be yes I, I think that's a great idea what do you think Darcy Oh yes, absolutely. We, we this is not going to go away. It's not going to change unless we do something about it. And I think we have some opportunities coming up. We can, um, you know, talk to our finance, our new finance director. Um, we have some ideas about maybe some uh, using some money. Um, but again, we're you know it's just the beginning of some talks. So uh, it, we're we're trying to do the goal is to lower the ask for the town. Um, so we're going to be creative in doing that, but um, this isn't going away. This is this is here, and we're going to deal with it. We're going to show some leadership, and we're going to get it done. Okay, great. Thank you. And then the last one was planning board. So the liaison to the planning board I've been on for you know a few years. I was interested in this year, obviously, because between the 40B they're reviewing right now, and then obviously Meadowbrook that's coming up. It's obviously I mean, the good news about this is it's a liaison. There you have no, right. there's no voting. There's no right. you're not. So I think. So I would like to be the liaison, but I would welcome you to still attend uh, all the meetings. So, um, but um, that's because because I, I, if I don't do that one, I'm sort of I just I gave away a couple others <laughs> in the process. So, so the planning board's near and dear to me. So if I can stay on that, that would be great. Oh boy, guilt. Okay, sure. <laughs> you go right in. Yeah. Do you know also though? But but just remember the 40B, the planning board. No, but won't they're just doing the. But they're but they're, but they're but they're still giving guidance to the, zone, to the ZBA. So. Right, they write, they write their recs to the yeah. ZBA, right? So. Yeah, still give some guidance. So. And then obviously Meadowbrook, if we see that or not see it, that will be a big discussion topic and yeah. it comes through. Well, um, sure, Bill, absolutely. So, yeah, so I think that, and we'll issue this out, but everything else is going to stay how it was marked on here. I will make the adjustment with Joe. And mm -hmm. um, and then we did, I did add one at the bottom, which wasn't on previously, was the HRC. So and Jamie's going to stay on that. So. Sean, you were quite easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad because I mean I think you're you're an important uh, member of the uh, of the um, CPC of the CDC. So yeah. CPC, <laughs> not CDC, CPC. Okay. okay great. Well, that was <laughs> easy. I hope we have a topic. I think that was easy, and I appreciate everyone's uh, working together on that one. And you still have these. And then oh yes, Joe. So Joe said so you sent out the. Um, Sent out the, yes, and, and since I sent it out to you, I've also confirmed that, as uh, Rosie mentioned earlier, Richard Luongo has resigned uh, from the Conservation Commission. That's the uh, opening that there currently is. But Chris Currier, whose term was due up uh, this, uh, this month, has confirmed he'd like to be reappointed. Okay. David Smith has confirmed 
Bill Wilson and Dave Thompson have confirmed that they'd like to be reappointed. Marnie Crouch has, and David Smith have confirmed that they'd like to be reappointed to the Affordable Housing Trust. Virginia Cookson to the um, to the Tobacco That's Woods awesome. Land Management Trust. Um, I jumped ahead by accident. Sorry about that. Um, these appointments, I, Sean, maybe you can help me clear up. I have you, Bob Preston, and Sherry Leonard, but you're all liaisons appointed from the committees that you work on, uh, that you're already on. So right. the, I don't know. I don't know if we have to be reappointed. I don't think you need to be reappointed. I think that the board, we just have to. I think your vote, your board has a vote. Your board on has to vote on your reappointment, right? right. Yes. So I'll, I'll make sure that the boards all know. Um, and I think you just confirmed that Sean would be staying on as the. Um, so we, do, we, need to, we do need to vote on this. So maybe yeah. we can go back and vote on that in a second. And then uh, Penny Wingate um, has, has asked to stay on the Council on Aging. Uh, Rick Mitchell and Chad Smith have asked to stay on the HDC. And I confirmed with um, Heather Ford that all of the people in yellow here have confirmed uh, that they wanted to remain on the Hamilton Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, an error in the way reappointments were done last year. So Lori Johnson and John McWain their terms had expired, but they stayed on because they didn't look to leave, and mm -hmm. so they got to stay on. So you'd just be reappointing them for two-year appointments this time, uh, and three, right. instead of three. And then uh, Scott Clements and Kristen Weiss have both expressed interest in being remaining on the uh, HHDC. Mm -hmm. Bill, Brad Tilly wants to stay on the Recreation Board, and Bill Bowler has agreed by a previous vote of the board cycle. So I don't think you need to include him in this vote tonight. You had uh, asked him to come back temporarily and he had agreed to stay until December so um, in December you'll be f voting to fill a vacancy you that have, have about two and a half years left on it on the um, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong Joe but on the H HDC Catherine Middlebusher resigned that's why her name's in red here right. yeah and we also have her on the CPC still Ah. And she's not on the CPC, so we have a vacancy there from the HHDC. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. And Town Hall Billing Committee is also has needs some correction. It has me as the BOS rep, and it has Jeff Hubbard as a member. Is Jeff still a member well, of the Town Hall Billing Committee? You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't go back and correct that one because technically oh. that, that commission it's charter yeah, has sunsetted, so yeah. uh, I figured we'd gotcha. redo it when right. it was meant to go for a certain amount yes, of time. Sir. That's so that's why what it says not the, applicable. Um, what about the waste reduction committee? We didn't include it because I the last we, we heard, uh, nobody, you guys hadn't made a decision what you want to do. We're, we're in limbo. With we're in limbo with them, and I didn't really. So whatever we decide to reinvigorate that group as, I would think that that liaison or those appointments would kind of transfer. Yeah. I would have to re ask them to reappoint. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm looking for right here. Yeah, thank you. Okay. The only other one was for the um, CPC besides Catherine Middlebusher is Chris. Courier, he's an appointment from the Conscom, but he's really yet to show up for a meeting in the Chris six Trillier? years or so. Yeah. Which for, for which group? For CPC. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, Joe, when you reach out to the HHDC about their. Yeah. And maybe ask about uh, Chris Courier if he wants to continue on the CPC, that maybe he should show up. Okay. We have a real as as I said, he did. Kind of said yeah. Push the issue a little bit. He did say that three meetings row, we have he did say he wanted he was willing to stay on the conscom. He didn't we didn't ask him about the CPC, so I'll um, I'll ask him. So let's go back to the uh, <coughs> board segment uh, uh, the liaison roles. Uh, so how do we um, memorialize this and vote on this joke? It's a uh, do I have to read off all? Their appointments by you, so I don't think you need a vote. We've ever really formalized you, it. You've we never just, had a vote. You we've just you picked them and never okay. voted the, board, on the chair has the uh, authority to appoint liaisons, and you sought their input, and you've basically worked it out. So as long as you're in, in agreement with what everybody okay. agreed to, you're all set on that. And then, um, and then, uh, and then on this, I'd ask, make a, yeah, make I'd a add motion it. for to, to approve the reappointment of all as a highlighted in yellow. As highlighted in yellow on the. And these would all June be for 20, June 2021 appointment status sheet. Right. This would be for all that are in yellow, uh, would be three year terms, except for the two um, on the Hamilton Foundation, which we noted would be for two year terms. So, so moved. I'll second it since Darcy moved it. All right, and we'll do a roll call. Oh, sorry, sorry, any further discussion? No. So, I mean, this was pretty successful. I mean, it seems like you've. Uh, build most roles, right? It's pretty good yeah, we got a couple of vacancies, uh, and you know, certainly the credit for organizing this list and getting terms and stuff in here goes almost entirely with uh, my since departed uh, assistant and 
Kerr and Kale. Um, they mm. worked a lot on this. Sharon George, when she was here, did some work on it as well. But Corinne and, and um, Pat really brought this into form for a variety of reasons when the town switched website servers or uh, formats. Uh, the old lists got lost and the record wasn't clear. So we've had to go back and or they've had okay. to go back and really kind of fill in the blank. So this is pretty much close to a complete list now, um, minus the vacancies and the- That was the, impressive. And uh, we should be able to keep it ready going keep forward. Grin, yeah, so. Grin will do a good job of that. All right, so we'll have a roll call vote. Darcy? Darcy Dale, aye. Sean? Sean Farrell, aye. Rosie? Rosie Kennedy, aye. Jamie Knutson, aye. And William Olson, aye. All right. Joe, can we stop sharing your screen now? Yes, ma'am. Of course. Thank I'm sorry. you. Um, All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to confirm our special time meeting date for either 1016 or 1023. So, Joe, do you have a pro and con for either of those dates that we should talk about? Or? No. Um, they, well, these dates were requested and asked by um, you. Know, you've been mostly been trying to stick to October uh, time meetings. I think we get a little bit better. Uh, turnout with October um, makes it a little bit easier for uh, the folks at the end of the year. Uh, and Corinne Kale, the tra town uh, clerk, asked if we could, if you right. could choose one of those two dates. So, um, part of the reason we need to uh, know now is that we need to uh, organize the calendar. The calendar for town meeting backs up from the date of town meeting. And with special town meeting, unlike um, annual, we'd have to post the warrant for the special town meeting 14 days in advance, not seven days in advance. So. The sooner we know about this, the sooner we can start to all the organizing that goes into making sure there's a warrant and it's printed in time and posted on time. And the town moderator is here, so I don't know if he has a preference. Maybe he has a vacation one of those weekends. You want to check with him. Uh, either day works. No leaf, no leaf peeping. <laughs> the 16th is my birth birthday, but you know, I'll still. Everybody will be there for your birthday party. That's right. <laughs> um, and when is Columbus Day? That, which week is that? Good question. Let me, uh, Second Monday. So that might be that the eleventh. Yeah. yeah. Monday. It might be the Monday before the sixteenth. The sixteenth. Yeah, so if I make sense, do it the twenty third. I was going to ask for the twenty third. Anyhow, it gives us just <laughs> that more few yeah. more days. Yeah, August October eleventh. So it makes that a shorter week. So I would say yes, let's do it on the twenty third. Yeah. Okay. That's right says we need to discuss it, not vote on it. So I think we've agreed on the 23rd. That was easy. Yeah. I, it says discuss it. I, I mean, I wouldn't, if you want to wait and vote in next meeting, but I think at some point you should probably vote on the, the meeting day. Well, that's an easy vote, I think. Right, Darcy? Yes. Shall I make a motion? Sure. Okay. I move that the special town meeting should be the um, October 23rd, 2021. Do I have a second? And roll, uh, any further discussion? So, yeah, I mean, and the only discussion that Sean and I have had, and obviously our kids both play sports and on the fields, but it's, um, you know, finding a figure out a way that we can get more attendance. And so 1023 might even be better for that because as soon as, the more you get into fall, the less games you have on Saturday. So I haven't seen sports schedules for. Yeah, we've tried to in the springtime with Wenham and Hamilton having the same day town meeting. We typically try to close the fields, but in the fall it's difficult because Wenham hardly ever has a SPM, so we're kind of only half the equation there, yeah. so it makes it a little difficult. Uh, yeah, so it might be even a better day for that, too. All right, so do a roll call vote. Uh, Darcy Dale? Darcy Dale, aye. Sean? Sean Farrell, aye. Rosemary? Rosie Kennedy, aye. Jamie Goodson, aye. And William Molson, aye. So unless... Just to follow up, Mr. Chair, before we move on with uh, our town manager, we got to confirm with the school that that's an okay date. I will. Right, so... Yeah. Yep. Ten tentatively, tentatively. Yeah, yeah where, 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 and where, where will it be? We'll talk about that. We'll be inside, we'll be outside. Yeah. Set outside, yeah. Right. I'm planning it to be in the high school auditorium again, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, as, much as, I, as much as people enjoy the outdoor town meeting under the tent, it's expensive <laughs> and it's a, it's a expensive. big production. Um, it's expensive and it's a big production, so. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think it's probably. Um, cemetery fee discussion and vote. So. Yes, sir. I will. Uh, I'll as soon as Darcy is able to get get in the morning, we'll let you know. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. So, Senator, we had this on the agenda, but weren't sure if we're going to talk about it because Tim may or may not have been available. Is Tim uh, available? Tim, uh, Tim is. Here. Tim is on. There he is. All right, Tim. So you pr I know you presented this before, and you talked about you're just trying to uh, correct or 
update fees haven't been touched in a dozen years or so. So, and you've looked at other towns and seen what they do, and done a good comparison, and and just trying to right size to make sure that we're not losing money in this aspect. So, go ahead and present your uh, case, and we'll hopefully we can vote on this tonight. Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, looking at some surrounding towns, um, trying to kind of get in line with their their fees. Um, not only for plots, but also for in, interment, um, vault burials, cremations. Um, you know, every year our, you know, our employees, you know, the, their rates increase and, and um, just trying to cover the costs of, of the actual burials. Uh, typically, like a vault burial takes about three employees. Mm -hmm. um, it's all overtime. Um, it's an automatic four hours for each employee. So it totals about $600. And that's kind of where I came up with that fee. Yeah. Uh, cremations are a little less, usually one or maybe maybe uh, usually one employee, um, depending on who that employee is, obviously how much, you know, if, if our foreman is there, he, he makes a little bit more money than maybe our, our equipment operator. So um, that's, it kind of depends on who's on, but usually it's a foreman, it's an equipment operator and a, a laborer uh, to do a, a full burial. Um, the single plot and four grave lots, I mean, those are kind of self-explanatory there. If you look at the surrounding towns, we are quite a bit lower yeah. um, than everybody. And uh, I think those rates were last touched in like 2003. So um, the other thing that I wanted to try to do, and I, I looked at some other surrounding towns and see how they handle the weekends, uh, the also the, the snow uh, off season, uh, which does cause sometimes more problems, um, you know, if there is snow on the ground or, if, uh, you know, frost, things like that. So there was uh, some other towns paid premiums. They paid overtime rates, depending if it's a Saturday or Sunday or after hours, um, depending on what the uh, timing is. And that's kind of what I was trying to do as well. We do get quite a bit of calls for the weekends, um, you know, so it's uh, it's time out of, of uh, you know, to come in and to report for work. Um, and that's where a lot of the minimums, uh, the four hour minimums come into, come into effect. So I just tried to, you know, look at some other towns, get some other, um, comparisons and to try to kind of come in line with them when it comes to not only the actual purchase of the plot, but also the, uh, the, um, hours and, and, uh, labor costs, yeah, put it up. Yeah. uh, to, to hold a ceremony. Actually, you want to put the spread, the, the the rate spreadsheet would be better. Yep, I'm gonna increase the uh, view a little. So the only quite one question I had, Tim, always pulling that up, is that some of them were NA previously, and now they have a fee. Is that is that um, that makes sense too in your eyes? Because we're why why were we charging before? I don't have. Charging that, I don't see that, but. Um, Okay, now I'm looking back on my sheet, so if you don't see me, I'm just looking. Um, yeah, the NAs uh, with some of the other towns, they just don't have costs for them. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, th these rates are obviously under, you know, for discussion, um, trying to find the exact rate structure that we have compared to other towns. is It's, you know, it's close, but it's not exact. Um, mm -hmm. I think the other sheet, um, I'm not sure if you have that up or not. Um, okay, let me pull the, you don't want this one, you want to see the other one, Tim? Well, the other one compares to what we had prior and then comparing to what I was looking to uh, uh, as a proposed rate. So there are a few NAs, those are, um, those were not, we did not actually have them as separate charges like a veteran vault burial and a veteran cremation burial okay. um that is uh there, if you want to call it a, a, dis, a discount for being a veteran um they were paying the same amount prior mm -hmm. um so that's what that is and then the disinterment uh, we we do get a couple of those actually um and uh we don't it doesn't come often but we never really had a fee fee structure for it mm -hmm. um for the vault and the cremation disinterment. Um, so that's what those, those were for. And then the mis miscellaneous, um, the winter conditions is what I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, adding on a kind of a premium for uh, mm -hmm. winter work, winter conditions. Um, sometimes it's, it's, it's not only the conditions, it's also our, my guys are out 
uh, or been or plowing, um, and we're trying to fit that all in. Um, so it's it's um, it's just a tough time to uh, commit to a full full, full burial and um, you know for the extra extra fees. That's what I was kind of pushing in there. And a lot of towns do that. A lot of towns either have the winter conditions or the OT premiums mm -hmm. um, that I have um, indicated here. So yeah, so I agree that you know, yeah, so checking the box here. One, I agree that you know we need to update our fees. Number two, I agree that looking at other towns was the right thing to do. The the third question I have for you is it's probably harder to answer, but you know, did we? What was our internal sort of audit on cemetery department expenses? I mean, did FinCom look at it or did? you know, finance, look at it, or sort of, I mean, we want to make sure we get this thing right. Mm -hmm. um, the, the numbers seem right. I just didn't know if, if this was all something you had did internally or you were able to sort of look back at historical data and how much we've... Uh, yeah, I, I, I talked with Dolores. Um, you know, she's the one who takes care of the cemetery. And, uh, you know, looking back at timesheets, looking back at what we've actually... Um, you know, like I said, some of these are easier to calculate than others mm -hmm. um, just because they ha happen more frequently. Um, you know, some of these other ones I, I kind of plugged in there because we didn't have that. We, we've had maybe like a disinterment. We had one. I didn't know what to charge because mm -hmm. we've, we've really never had one before, mm -hmm. um, during my time and we didn't have a fee structure for it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, looking at the, uh, the past, um, I guess requests, uh, for burials, they all, a lot of them are on the weekend. We do have some during the week. You know, especially during the spring, summer, fall, um, you know, after hours. Um, but a lot of them fall in the weekend, which that's where we incur a lot of our costs. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I was trying to match up, um, looking back and seeing how much we did pay for a certain um, out of pocket or from a town's expense um, for, for, a, for a burial, for a, for a cremation, um, things like that. So I, I haven't. FinCom didn't look at it. Uh, like I said, I just looked at some surrounding towns and as well as our past data uh, that we have on, on timesheets and, and uh, DPW labor force um, to, you know, to try to match up and uh, break even as, as best we can. Right. Do you know how many plots we sell on average? I mean, I'm sure I don't. Um, I know we... We have, I, I think Joe Shea told me, if the cemetery foreman, we have, the, I believe, the second oldest active cemetery in Massachusetts. Wow. Um, the problem that we have is space. Um, we, we're, we did get a nice brand new uh, section uh, about maybe two or three years ago, yeah. uh, probably another 500 graves. Um, but we're going to be starting to run out of space mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I don't know how long. I, I don't wish that upon anybody. I don't yeah. want to run out of space, but that's the, the, you know, the nature of the beast, I guess. But um, I don't know for sure how much we sell. I, I can get that for you. I can get that data, no problem. Uh, how much we sell in a, a given year. But I know that, you know, we don't have a lot of space. Um, yes. Great. I knew, you know, I knew we opened to expand. A little bit more. You know, so much besides more. what we've already carved out right now. So I mean, my my recommendation we can talk about it as a board here, but is that I think it's important to update these prices. I think what he's proposing yeah. is good. What I'd recommend is that you know it may be a one or two year study that we just sort of look at it in two years and just make sure we did the right thing. So if we can do a better cost center, maybe Joe would assign a cost code to this so we can look at revenue versus expense and make sure that yeah, I'm curious we're breaking what even. running averages of plot sales and what the increase would be for us. You know, and, and it, Joe, Joe, did you get a, a, a beat on the revenue that we were looking um, for to see what this would would do to the dif to the difference between last year and this year if we go when this gets? No, we haven't had a chance to, to run that because, uh, as I said, Tim brought this to us in June, and I really hadn't had a chance to get. Uh, yeah, at the end of May, beginning of June, and we really hadn't had a chance to get um, finance to take a look at it. But, Okay. Uh, Alex, take a look. We do know that, as Tim said, we've been running kind of, uh, it's been a bit of a cost center for burials because we, the revenue hasn't been covering yeah, the we overtime. Make sure so. we cover our yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, I think we have a couple different things. I mean, the interments, I mean, obviously, I'm just trying to break even with my guys, you know, labor force. Right. Uh, the lot prices is, is more of just in line, trying to get in line with some neighboring yeah. towns. Um, right. You know, obviously, we'll help with our perpetual care and our costs to maintain the cemetery and 
th those costs seem to be going up and up uh, right. over the last uh, right. Manpower several and years. Um, and I think, I think the benefit is there. I think people have noticed that the mm -hmm. cemetery is in looking mm -hmm. in good shape, but it does cost mm -hmm. money to do so. And yeah. when it starts to go sour or not looking so well, we, we do get some calls and it's a, it's a, Joe Shea does a great job down there. He takes pride in the, in the, in the cemetery as he should. And I mean, I think a lot of people in Hamilton really enjoy, it's kind of a strange area, but they really enjoy looking in yeah. and, and wandering through the cemetery. It's a, kind of a, a very surreal place uh, to go and um, but they like the condition to be um, you know up to a certain standard yeah and I guess my other thing is too like we're since Tim you mentioned we're running out of space there eventually like if we're figuring out kind of our average plot sales per year we should try to forward think on when we're going to run out of space and what we're going to do you know are we going to try and find other space or that will just be the end of it right i mean if yeah we're, i think we're, if we're selling yeah. 10 plots a year and we uh, got 50, 50 more plots to spend yeah. they're done in you know so forward thinking that little bit's going to i think make a big difference too well you know we do have a patent yeah. estate with some land on it yeah. i don't know if we can plant people in the I jo <laughs> so close uh, to the water joe, joe shea has brought up a couple opportunities uh for me to take a look at and to to discuss was uh, one of them is the back um, square lot of the pools property. Yeah. Um, it's a landlocked piece. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the family would be interested in selling or or even talking with the town, but that's literally our our cemetery surrounds this piece of property. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's a vacant piece of land right now. Um, he's he's always said, hey, you know, someday we might want to look at that. We might want to look at this property. And I, I don't know if it's an option or not, but that would obviously be the, the most ideal place we, hmm. just because it's it is in the actual area that we are working in, and uh, that we currently have a cemetery um something to possibly consider in the future right i don't know if anybody heard can you people hear me my mic might not yes be. okay i can hear second. if we you know if we do raise these rates that could help us purchase some more property for for cemetery so food for thought so we have two choice here one is vote on these rates today which would start that revenue coming in immediately or have if we feel like fincom or our new finance director needs to check the rates um we could wait two more weeks i have i have a thought i um totally understand what tim's saying about the costs um of manpower and i certainly understand the need to increase those costs. I'm a little on the fence about the um, price of the plots. I mean, I, I, I think that's, that's a huge increase. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure that we need to go um, from 450 to 700 and then for uh, a four grave, double the price. Uh, and a cremations almost double also. I wonder if we could think about that and maybe come back somewhere in the middle um, but I do agree with the manpower charges. I mean, there's another option too. We could, we could tear it up to that proposed price. We could do a, a year kind of an in-between price and then mm. the next year escalate it up more, kind of like when we do the water rates. Mm. You know, we kind of review the revenues from it and, and go from there. That, yeah. But even our proposed rates that Tim's put forward, I think most of them are still under they're low. what our surrounding communities yeah. are doing. You yeah. know, they're much lower still. Right. Yep. Land, land value is going up and we're going to buy new. So I think, I think about like Sean saying, for every piece that we sell, we got to make that money to go buy more land. So right. Right. that's what it's, it's really not paying for the land we have. It's about paying for the land we have to go buy. So yep. um, yeah. it's today's rates. But right. um, I, I, do, I do agree. I think the four grave lot, doesn't. there's no uh, discount to that because 700 times four is 28. So that probably doesn't make sense to have the 2800. Seems right, a little, you might as well buy four singles. Might as well buy four price. singles, same price. But so at that point, probably needs to be. But the other ones seem to make sense because they're oh. seem to be right size. But I, I mean, I, like I said, I think it's uh, you know fair and reasonable way to break even on this. So we shouldn't be losing money. And hasn't. When's the last time we updated these prices, uh, Tim? Three. Yeah, okay. so 2003, I believe. This is what I could find. Years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But also the reality is we don't know if we've lost money on the sales of the plots. Right. 
We don't. We, we don't. We just ask well, for that. Well, yeah, because we we're not that. saving money to buy a new right. new because we're not because yeah. yeah, not losing money on it. It's just like I said, you're not. It's not that you're losing money, but you're not <laughs> properly allocating those. Right. It seems costs. like we're losing a little bit of breaking even. Yeah. We have to make that investment at some point. Right. On more property, so we might as well raise it. Well, right, and I'm not disagreeing with raising yeah. it. I'm just. Um, encouraging us to think about a more modest increase this year and then maybe look at it again next year or the year after instead of once every 20 years i agree it's probably better <laughs> not to do it every, every, i was gonna say i was gonna make it i was gonna say make it you know vote on the rate today for whatever we agree on and then say we're gonna revisit it in two or three years or or what you could do is tie it to inflation every year Set, set out with the, you know, the 700 or the 750 or whatever, and then just tie it to inflation every year or every other year. Tim, Tim when you got the rates from the other communities that we're comparing to, did you, did, did you ask about how they got to their rates or did you just get the rates from their websites or something like that? Uh, we, just, we just did a kind of a rate, mm -hmm. you know, right. yeah. history. Um, I just grabbed them to see what they were charging. Um, yeah. I had a feeling we were a little low. I mean, obviously, we haven't changed them since 2003. I mean, I'm, and I was just trying to bring it up, obviously, to what current market would be, if you want to call it that, or current sale price. Um, I'm, I'm fine doing, you know, I, like I said, this is just a draft, in my opinion. I, I, I thought we could discuss it first and make sure that these right, you know, these are what everybody's in, a, in agreement to do so. Because I know, I mean, obviously, this is, Something that has to be done, but there's mm -hmm. there's ways to do it. Maybe somebody else has a you know a better um, scenario. I, I just trying to. There's two different places here. You know, the interments. I'm just trying to cover cost. Yeah. Uh, lot prices. That's kind of a strange animal because you want to. You're trying to find kind of a market value right. to be able to maintain the cemetery or possibly plan for a future uh, purchase. Right. Mm -hmm. It's tough because when you look at the current versus proposed, it looks like a you've skyrocketed the rates, but we're still well under. But like, you know, to our point, we haven't raised it in almost 20 years. So that's Correct. Really like yeah. Yes, it's pretty much like the water rates. I mean, we hadn't so raised it in five years or whatever. And now shock, when I did, it mm -hmm. seemed like it was a large increase, but. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I guess what I suggest is that one of Tim's, what he said is, was this is a draft. So let's bring it back in two weeks. Let's have Finn come and if they meet and let's have fi our finance director look at it, give it a we'll look over with Tim. Um, and I think that part of the policy should be yeah that it gets looked at every we need to make up we need to make the policy part of you know sort of how often it gets looked at so whether it's two years three years five years I think, um, I think three is reasonable in three is probably reasonable yeah policy for the review mm -hmm. of it and, and I think uh, the two things that, a couple things that are gonna help me are the kind of what our what our kind of sales rate is right, right? and then our space left how mm -hmm. long do we run out of that space based on our kind of our average sales rate. You know, and then that will help kind of determine some of that. I'm, I'm okay with all these increases, mm -hmm. even though they're quite a bit, but we're still well under. The only one is the four grave lot, which, like you said, Bill, doesn't make sense because it's just four single lots combined. Right. It's the same price. It should be a little bit of a discount there. Correct. But other than that, I'm okay with the prices. But I, I am curious as to what our kind of run rate is, I guess. Yeah, I think that would be interesting to look at. Okay, so I'll take these, I'll forward these rates um, to FinCom and the finance director, okay. ask for their input, and uh, they'll meet with Tim. And but, make I, but I think it's important to have a look at our fees. I know we've, I think that's important. I don't, you know, maybe yeah. we should take one meeting and look at all of our sort of fees and make sure they're not too high, too low, they've been right size, but from the building department, building fees license. I know we've done it a I few years say, ago. What other fees do we have? We've, we've gone through our building fees we've yeah. gone through our water rate we've now look at cemetery do, what's our other fee structure that we have do we have others we go through a dog license fees i thought we did that a couple years ago mm -hmm. still we increased same. something recently at the clerk's office i can't remember what it was, was it the, the dog license, license? Fees, dog license yeah, yeah was increased yeah that'd be good just uh yeah maybe i'm gonna look at it and make sure that we mm -hmm. haven't forgot about something that hasn't been touched in 17 years and i think yeah i was gonna say with with this i think making that policy for a three-year review, like the water rates doing it every year and stuff like that. I think it's really important so we don't have these situations where it's been 20 years since we've made an increase. Sticker and shock. And lose your money. Right, and we lose your money. it's costing twice as much? And you're yeah. like, well, you're still paying less than any other community. And we, and we right. lost money for the last 20 years. <laughs> we've lost money for the last 15 years on it. That's a good one. Okay. All right. 
I'll bring it back in two weeks. Thank you, Tim. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Uh, the next item is a continuation of our discussion from last meeting where we talked about regionalizing our IT collaborative. That's not exactly true. We talked about entering into a, a, oh. an IMA, but not really I, regionalizing IT. I, yeah, an IMA, sorry, but for discussion. So, so last week we talked about a sort of a one, it's a sort of a three-year agreement, but it's a one-year at a time. two-year two agreement, agreement but one-year at a time. One-year at a time. The first year would cost somewhere between four and $5,000, and it basically just pays a consulting fee for them to put together a program. So the first year we're not getting any services, we're just gonna get a recommendation, we're basically paying them to give us a recommendation. Well, of and, 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 and a good look at what we have, a good uh, inventory, you know, of, what we inventory of what we have, and an assessment of it, of it against what is going on in municipalities around us. Are we yes. set up to be mm -hmm. able to, um, to collaborate with mm -hmm. them or others? So. so since we met, I think they had a couple other towns meeting. I don't know if you had got any update on, um, on other towns joining the. Uh, I, I, hadn't go, I hadn't checked with yeah. them to see, you know, but. I hadn't, I'm just been talking to the other town managers, nobody else uh, has, you know, everybody has, has expected that they'll uh, be allowed to move mm -hmm. forward, so. They're I mean, all I'm, I'm in favor of this. I think it's important that we, we, you know, stay ahead of IT, of IT especially in the, yeah. uh, the world that we're in today. And this is uh, to regionalize and get the power of larger towns and between buying power and knowledge and support. Um, mm -hmm. One thing we don't know what it's going to cost yet, so this is going to, and, and you said you could pay for it in this year's budget, so we're not going back for right. more more income, more money. And you know, right now we have a one man shop who does a very good job, but um, if something happens, um, the town could be at risk. And I think we need to have duplicity in our services to, in order to, to, to you know, con continuity and stability of government is very important, as we've seen the last year. So, so I, I'm in favor of it. I know we wanted to wait two weeks for people to think about it, look at it a little bit more, understand a little bit more. But it is important to understand, yeah, we're paying for basic consulting services for a year, and then and then at the end of the year, we'll get sort of the proposal, and then at that time we vote of whether, and every year we can vote whether we stop or we keep going. Right. So we, so every year we get that we get that right. vote. It doesn't ever lock us in for more than a year. Right. And, it, and it gives us stability. I mean, not that we don't have it now, but our IT person could decide to quit tomorrow. And what do we do? Mm -hmm. There's right. no contingency plan, right? Huh. So this would allow us a contingency. Deep, a deep bench of the deep bench of contingency. So, yeah. and I think the opportunity, um, the two-week opportunity <coughs> to really understand this proposal is very is very helpful. And I really will always advocate for when there's a big change coming up um, that we should always discuss it at one meeting and then have an, give everybody an opportunity to really analyze things and, and bring it back because I'm quite comfortable with this now where I wasn't two weeks ago. So I think that extra two weeks is really valuable and I appreciate the opportunity to really look at this carefully. Yeah. I, I agree, I think that's yeah, I think, I, I think that's a good idea and I think that's one yeah. of our policies. We, we, don't, we don't always wanna rush into a vote, so. Mm -hmm. So good. Uh, Darcy, do you have any questions or comments on the uh, IMA? Well, it, yeah, I actually spoke to Joe, I think it was last week about it. I, I think it's um, clear headed. I think we have to be always on the lookout for um, opportunities for security because, you know, this ransomware thing is not going to get any easier to deal with and we just don't have the infrastructure here or the um, talent really to deal with that and if we can find a way um, by collaborating with all these other towns to make sure that we're always on top that we're always covered we're always secure um, I, I feel better <laughs> physically feel better knowing that because it doesn't take much to really tip over the cart you know, it's um, and it's not getting any better. So we really have to be on our toes, and we have to um, work with the best people we can find. So I wasn't at the last meeting, but did we talk anything about? Uh, I know a few. It's been a few years now, but when we got into the community connector grant kind of stuff, there was some IT community grant. compact grant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if if you know a lot of times with 
grant stuff, if there's more people kind of involved or other communities, you kind of have a better shot at different things. Have we looked at any of that in what, any of the meetings with? They, they actually that's talk? actually in their paperwork. Yeah, yeah. That actually yeah, is yeah. part of their mission is that they're going to take it upon themselves to um, seek out grants uh, and grant opportunities and things like that. And that was another thing that really piqued my interest because um, you're right, grants, that's where the money is. Yeah, and the and yeah. if we if they're going to do that for us, that means we don't have to pay someone other than <laughs> in addition to them right. so yeah that's great yeah and, and you're right the more and the more communities you get together the, the more opportunity you have to get yeah. grants so it's, it, it, yep. it's a win-win this, this group of communities actually has already received one it grant re, uh, regional it grant from uh the uh, mass community compact um, Perfect. to build out the uh wi-fi connection between uh hamilton and essex and wenham and uh going that way towards yep. okay. so they've already they've already got one under their belt uh, when you do regional collaborations in those types of grants, generally a different town has to take a lead. So um, I believe Middleton took the lead the last time they got that grant because Essex had previously gotten a grant. No, so just kinda, we'll switch hats. We'll just switch hats. <laughs> and, you know, so again, another another thing that allows us to do to be a, 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 at the table and, and benefiting every year. If we do it on our own, I can only apply for those grants once every three years. Right. Um, so we can do it every year. With three here as part of a region, involved, right? we just bounce the 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 lead entity status around uh, the table and we can continue to benefit so mm -hmm. that's a good idea jamie anything else to add no i had my questions mostly addressed at the last meeting okay so do i have a motion to approve the regional ima for it collab uh, for the it collaborative so moved do i have a second second uh, any further discussion mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Darcy Dale. Darcy Dale, aye. Sean Farrell. Sean Farrell, aye. Rosemary. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Jamie Knudsen, aye. And Wayne Wilson, aye. That's great. No, I think this is a good move in the right direction. So mm -hmm. thank you, everybody, for uh, really thinking about that and, um, yeah, and I think thanks, making the right. Thanks to Joe for working on this yeah. for such a long time. Yeah. yeah. I think it's important. The more we can regionalize, I think it, I think we get better services for less money. So I think it's uh, we should really. It's going to be a hard step to take forward, but in terms of we talked about anything with you know anything Hamilton went in our community, we did we've done a few things now between yeah. HR and and and, uh, and building services, and so the more we can look at, it, I think it's uh, going to help us out, make it stronger, better, and more cost effective, mm -hmm. and, and more resilient. We, we, yeah. You know, we have an ability to to we don't have an ability to have a staff much larger than what we have. So if we if we have partnerships, we can survive better. Yep. That's good. Get better people, right? So. Um, and the last one was something that I put on after, um, sorry, I just sneeze here, but a couple of things happened, uh, and I forget the gentleman's name, uh, the, uh, I forget the um, student's name, but um, a student came to us about, uh, with the HRC uh, a few weeks ago and talked to us about the, uh, the land acknowledgement, the land yes. acknowledgement, right? And so it made me think, Everett, of Everett did, Everett. and uh, so it made me think about, um, about how the important students are in this town and um, about getting everyone's view and listening, you know, talking about Juneteenth and pride it's like everybody has a voice and we got not just they have a voice but we have to listen to their voices and hear their voices so and then uh, and then a couple of students wrote a, a letter to Patrick Refford about the um, about the project going on at uh, Meadowbrook and their opinion of the project and what they're hearing about it and Patrick wrote a very nice letter back to them um, so I think it's important that um, and then we also on the HRC we have a student you know because one of the things we wrote into the uh, into our charter for that that mission so I think my suggestion, my recommendation, is that we create a way for uh, all of our town committees that went through to have a student li uh, liaison that would help. The you know, be the school committee has a student liaison. We yep. could look at their bylaw or whatever they have. This kind of That's see awesome. how they have worked it into their board, and see if it's something that maybe the select board starts the kind of process, and maybe we get a student liaison to the select board, and then yep. it kind of snowballs from there. Yeah, I think we have to lead by example, right? So. So I'll take that on, and I will get with the um, school board. And uh, but Do they have a civics club at school. Do you know? Yeah. Any? I do not know. Hmm. The social justice club. We have the social justice club and a few environmental clubs and stuff like that. But I don't know. And, if the, they and have the students that wrote to Patrick wrote as part of a. It was either a class. Um, it was either a class or a extracurricular activity that yeah. they were involved in. Um, mm -hmm. That was focused on kind of local. Um, local management. Local. Yeah issues hmm. so. it's interesting so if everyone's in favor of that i'll start to look at that possibility but does everybody think that is that is a good idea and i think right i think you're right sean i didn't think about that but we should start with the uh the select board and then 
sort of roll it out from there and so we should be the uh, first ones to do it. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the benefit is they're all tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a generalization. I'm not sure that's all necessarily true. Oh, I, think they are. Oh, I don't know. They are. Whether, you know, whatever we call it, an associate, whether we call it an associate member, a student liaison, or whatever the title is, but, but we'll figure out what that is. But they observe, ask questions, you know. Yeah, I don't um, know what the school board has for their, yeah. their mm -hmm. person. I can't okay. remember mm -hmm. if they I don't think they vote. I think they just report kind yeah. of issues. And yeah, yeah no, I, think, I don't think it'll be a voting member, but yeah. I think the student council member, in fact, who does it with the school committee. Yeah, it is. I believe it is. I think with um, with this, I'd only s suggest that uh, the board can certainly do what it wants for itself and for boards and committees that you appoint. Uh, boards or committees that are uh, Independent. independently elected Independent. are probably going to have to consider this at your oh, urging, yeah. Yeah. but right, they right. may or may not yeah, be agree. required to do that. Right. Right. We have jurisdiction kind of over those appointed boards, right. but not the elected boards. Which is a pretty healthy list from what you just reappointed. Right. So uh, there's yeah. still a lot of there's still a lot of boards and committees that you that can benefit from this. And I like the idea of a student liaison. I, I like that nomenclature. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So maybe you all go to your boards. And, you know, I'll talk to the school committee. But maybe next time you're with your boards and committees, you can bring it up as a new topic and see yeah. if you get some yeah, positive yeah. feedback. Yeah. And, and so far, you're, is ever, who's the student liaison for the um, HRC again? Uh, Maya, Maya Bush. And that's been Maya going Beach, well. Beach. Beach. And that's been going well. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. positive. She brings a lot of energy and a lot of new, fresh ideas to the to the uh, to the HRC. It's really it's really fun to have her part of it. That's great. All right. Um, that is uh, all we have for today. We tried Shall to I make a motion? We tried to make the first meeting in person a sort of shorter one so we could all feel comfortable doesn't it coming. feel kind of weird to yeah, be back in in person a little bit uh, darcy yes since you're not here <laughs> please make the motion. your seat's waiting for you though darcy oh i i will make a motion may i make a motion to adjourn yes you can do i have a second second any further discussion so what we will do um so rosie helped uh form the uh the agenda and we'll also set it up with you darcy to form the next agenda okay Great. And I'll probably be next week sometime. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Darcy Dale. Uh, Darcy Dale, to adjourn. To adjourn. <laughs> to adjourn. <laughs> adjourn, yes. Jonathan Raphael. Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Jimmy Gibson, aye. And William Olson, aye. Thank you all for coming tonight and listening, and uh, we will see you in a couple weeks. Thank you.